need to, to put coats on them. So, so that's us manipulating surface volume ratio. But could, could we find examples of nature manipulating in other ways? And um, we found one the other day when I was on holiday. I um, was looking at the ceiling in Dubai, and this gecko was walking across the ceiling. And I was thinking, how can it do that? That's really mad. And so um, I kind of went home, and I sort of started to do some research about how geckos can stick on the ceiling. Hello, Charlotte, we've got a gecko with us, haven't we? Yes. Gordon do. Gecko. <laughs> He's in there, isn't he? Yeah. And what He's kind of gecko is he? He's a toke gecko. So the largest gecko. type you can get. Right, OK, brilliant. And um, he is able to walk up walls, isn't he? He is, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, isn't it? We've got a guess he can walk up walls, everybody. OK, so um, can we have a look? Would he have a go at that, do you think? Yeah, is he sure. going to be camera shy, right, or is he going to be? Give him a go. Might be a bit noisy. Okay. Oh, there he goes. He looks a bit annoyed. <laughs> is he a bit annoyed? He's all right. They, they do have a bit of a temper on them. Right. Sometimes. Is it because he hasn't eaten or something? Is he? Or he's no, been he's eating. All right. He's been he's eating. eating. Okay. Because I get a bit annoyed. <laughs> I mean, I just sort of short. Uh, anyway. Um, Ready? Okay. There he is. Look at that. How on earth does he do that? That is so brilliant. Well done. That is so amazing. Um, now, you hang on there. It would be all right if I... Yeah, can we just leave there. him there? Yeah, he'd be fine. Yeah? Yeah. Amazing. Isn't it amazing? All right, so let's think about how a gecko can do this. And Actually, I was thinking in my hotel room, and I was having a word with, with Hamish the hamster, and we came up with four possible explanations. I'm going to run them past you, and then we're going to do a vote, so you guys can run with me on this one. We thought that it may be that geckos have some sort of glue on their paws, right? A bit like a spider squirting out glue, and that's how they, they can walk up walls. So that is option number one for you to think about. Option number two is that they actually have nails. So, well, not nails, you know, but, you know, something spiky, all right? And that's how they get up these walls. Oh, is he all right? Yeah, fine. <laughs> I'm talking about you, gecko. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yes. Um, option number three is that, and this is my favorite, uh, that they have little, these kind of suckers, suckers on them. You know, like the stuff you put onto bathrooms and things like that. Suckers? Impressed? Well, all right. <laughs> and option number four, they have some sort of weird hairs on them. Weird kind of hairs. I, we sort of run out of ideas, haven't we, by that point? Um, OK, weird hairs. So let's have a vote. Who thinks it is? Bits of glue, a bit like a spider, squirting out glue. Anyone? Who votes for that? Ooh, no one. Mm. Who votes for the nails? Come on, that was quite a good idea. No? Who votes for suckers? Suckers! Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm not giving anything away. All right. And who votes for the hairs? So in fact, we're sort of equally split in this audience between hairs and suckers. <laughs> not often you get to say that, is it? Anyway, all right. So, um, Gordon, do you want to tell us how you do it? No, you don't. All right. Um, all right, so um, let's see how he does it. Let's actually have a look under the microscope. So what we did is we found a microscopic image of the pores of a gecko. And um, we've got it over here. And look, when you actually look underneath the microscope at these pores of, of, the, of the gecko, and this is really high magnification, you get this thing that looks a bit like sort of celery or kind of uh, rhubarb. Now if we zoom even further in, yes, look, hairs, actually hairs on the end of sort of hairs. So it's hairs on hairs at, is, is what this gecko's paws are under the microscope. So this gecko has hairy hands. However ludicrous that sound is, it is the truth. So that's, that's really mad, isn't it? Um, OK, well, look, um, before we go on, I'm just going to let Gordon go, because he looks like he's kind of, yeah, he wants to have a bit of a rest, doesn't he? Can you just open that? <laughs> and thank, yeah, big hand for Gordon. Thank you very much. Geckos climb up walls using hairy hands. Well, that hasn't told us anything, has it? I mean, that's how it works, but why does that work? It, and, it's, you know, what's going on there? So I want to do a demo now, which is going to try and 
get, e eke that out. What, what's really going on here? And I'm going to need six. <laughs> Can you believe it? I need six uh, volunteers. And I need three boys, the strongest boys in the world, and three girls, the strongest girls in the world. OK, so boy there, yes. And uh, oh, yeah, go on, the, 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 the dog denier. And yes, um, uh, go, that girl there, yes, go on, yes, you, yes, yes, you, yes. <laughs> OK, now, girl power versus boy power. Now, what we've got here is two health and safety manuals, right? And um, <laughs> if I sent that, so you can hold that rope, and you guys hold that rope. Have you got a bit of the rope? Now, you need to go in a line. You all, it's basically, all right, you're going you're gonna to pull against each other. Are you ready? Now, two health and safety manuals, and all we've done with them is interleave the pages. There's no glue, there's no bolts or anything. Just interleave the pages. And what I want you two groups to do is, is, if you're strong enough, to rip these apart, all right? And in, the, in doing so, humiliate you guys, humiliate the boys by sort of pulling them across here. And you guys, you know, girl power, boy power, right? Ready? Are you guys ready? Steady, go. Yes, and the girls are really holding the other boy. Ah, but what's happening to this? What is happening to this? Come on, guys. That's a dead heat, I think. Well done, guys. Well done, guys. But also, what, else, what also won here, I think, was these books, right? Now, who? Yes, I know. You're right. Yes, they always win. I know. You have to get used to that in life. Um, now, look. <clears throat> you, do you believe me that these, there's no glue here? Have a look at that. Have a look at that. OK. That's mad, isn't it? No glue, right? Just paper. No glue? No, nothing. So that's incredible, isn't it? And it turns out that even though you guys are really strong, you would have to have two tanks pulling in opposite directions to pull this apart. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? Well, look, thanks a lot very much. Thanks. And you can go back to your seats. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Next time you're in a burning building, right, and you're thinking there's no way out, and you start going for the sheets and knotting them together, don't do it. Get the telephone directories, all right? Um, who says, yeah. So look, how does that work, and how can that help us understand the gecko? Well, why, why is it such a strong force? Well, it turns out that what's keeping those pieces of paper together is this tiny molecular forces between the two sheets. And the forces are very small, but, we, but, but if you maximize them over lots of area, right? So if you can times a small force by a large area, you get a decent force. And by having every single piece of paper over each other, you, we actually managed to get a large area of interface there, didn't we? So it, you, can you, could it be that the gecko is using the same idea to climb up walls? Well, what does a wall look like when it's magnified up? And here is, this is not a picture of the Alps. But it might be, right? This is what happens if you magnify a wall. It may look smooth to you, and you may run your finger across a wall or a surface and think, well, that's quite smooth. But under the microscope, surfaces are very rough. They look like the, mount the mountains, right? So if you are touching something, so this is like, this is a massive me, right? This is what my thumb looks like, see, quite nicely groomed. Um, and, um, if I'm touching a wall and I'm trying to climb up it, I need to max, if I want to use the same force as with the, as with the book demo, I need to maximize my area of contact. So I try to do that. I'm pressing my finger in here. But you can see that actually all I ever do is I kind of just touch the tips of the mountain. And it's really very hard for me to do anything else. And so ultimately, I get very little contact with the wall in terms of area. And so I don't get any kind of help. And you know, is this also true of when you, you touch anything? You touch a surface, and you think you're touching it. You're mostly just touching the tips of mountains. We, we very rarely really touch things. But the gecko knows better, right? The gecko has hairy hands, right? So if we were to zoom in on a gecko's paw, we've already seen that. It's got these amazing hairs. 
So look what the gecko does. The gecko gets onto the wall. The wall is rough, but that's no problem because the hairs get right down into the valleys, right? And, they, and, you, and you're maximizing an area of contact there. So even though there's no adhesive force in terms of glue or any kind of mechanical scratching, it's just the same force, these surface forces, which are tiny, but you maximize the area of contact and you can climb up walls. So well done, Gecko, for working that one out. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you material scientists, why don't you just get on with it and make some gloves, like a gecko's hand, hairy gloves, and then we can all just walk up walls and be Spider-Man, right? That's exactly what you're thinking. And, well, it's not so far from the truth. So I've got here the latest sample from a lab in California, which is trying to do exactly that. It's just a prototype at the moment, and I just want to show you what it looks like under the microscope. So we go here and we look in. See, actually, what they've done, they've engineered a material that is incredibly, has these like filaments. And when they're pressed against the wall, they bend and they make huge contact with that wall. 